As with any other medication device procedure or anything else, uh, choosing when in medicine, choosing when to start it, switch to an alternative, uh, abandon it, or, uh, or uh, consider that perhaps treatment is not needed is a very important question. Because multiple sclerosis got to the party somewhat late and that we for many years did not have effective therapies, we're sort of reaching a point now 27 years into treatment after the first approval of beta seron in 1993 where uh, we have a whole generation of people who have been treated for a very prolonged period of time and yet we've not asked nor answered this very fundamental question do they need to be treated forever uh, does the benefit that they obtain from treatment uh, outweigh any uh, downsides either with risk with costs with side effects or other things uh, and uh, this is on the background of very little data, if any, that these medicines are beneficial in people over the age of 55, just because people over the age of 55 have been excluded from all the clinical trials that have obtained uh, uh, federal uh, approval here in the United States and in other countries. And so the reality is we have very little data at all, one way or the other. And in addition, uh, there is data that things that are important, they're not the only thing, but things that are important, such as relapses with multiple sclerosis, new MRI scan changes with multiple sclerosis, diminish with age and are substantially lower in those over the age of even 45 to 50, and certainly over the age of 55 to 60. Uh, and also substantial data that the medications that are presently available are much more effective in younger people than they are in people who are older. Uh, and uh, data that is consistent with the idea that uh, you can um, potentially discontinue the therapies uh, after uh, no, no specific age, but as people age, uh, and if they've not had recent disease activity, that is have stability, and that's primarily taken from database analyses. So the purpose of our study was to do a randomized controlled trial to ask that question directly, because all of the database studies and propensity-based models where you do matching of people who stay on drug versus go off drug, they're very useful, they're very helpful, and I'm glad they've been done. Um, they, are, they are associated with a series of potential uh, biases about how the patients are included into the studies, and they don't ask the question in a very concrete, explicit way. They mostly just see who went off medication for whatever reason, who stayed on the medication for whatever reason. And so uh, we and uh, um, our colleagues around the United States are involved in the DISCO-MS study, the discontinuation trial. In addition, uh, there are studies in France with Anne Kerbrat, that's K-E-R-B-R-A-T, and um, Ava Stribis, uh, that's S-T-R-I-J-B-I-S in uh, the Netherlands, who are also doing randomized con uh, controlled clinical trials, um, looking at slightly different populations than ours. Our population uh, is 55 and older, have not had a relapse for at least five years while they've been treated, have not uh, had a scan change uh, within the at least the last three years, um, and have continuously been taking medication uh, over that time frame, uh, with the uh, most recent change uh, being no more recent than two years. That is, they've been stable on that particular drug as well. And so far, we've been able to um, fulfill enrollment up to 260 individuals, uh, roughly half and half, uh, half remaining on their medication, half randomized to go off their medication. Um, and uh, right now, the last patient last visit will be in August of 2021, and we anticipate data being, being available in roughly early 2022. Um, we do have the preliminary demographics of the people who've been included in the study. So it's 260 people, and looking at them overall, that is all of them together. The average age is about 63. Um, about 80% are women. <clears throat> excuse me, uh, about 80% are women, about 90% are white. Um, the last relapse for people is averaging 13 years prior to enrollment in the study, so they've been stable for a prolonged period of time. 
the average level of disability is mild to moderate on the EDSS scale is about three, a little over three. And on the PDDS, the patient determined disease steps is uh, about two. And uh, so these are mild to moderately um, disabled individuals. The vast majority are still uh, referred to as relapsing MS, uh, about 83%. Um, and um, uh, 102 so far have uh, completed uh, their two-year involvement in the study. So we have um, uh, a significant number, uh, well over half, who are still in the follow-up phase uh, and will be uh, completing as of August of 2021.